And so it's come to this, the last trading day of the year. Where has the year gone and what happened to the PSE in the 12 months of 2016? For some answers, let me bring in a Bloomberg favorite, June Kalekai, Marketing and Research Head of ANA Securities. June, we always turn to you for the big days. Right. Let me put it out there straight up. I think most people were expecting us to be in a better position markets-wise yes. by the time we got to this day. And as it is, when you look at the PSE, we're very close to bear market territory. Come on, be honest. Were you expecting us? Were you expecting things to be this bad? Well, let me just sum up the entire year into two words: okay? unconventional and challenging. Okay, unconventional in the sense that when we started the year, the outlook was very promising. Everybody was very optimistic, even election year spending and expecting the economy to grow. Well, in so far as the economy is concerned, we did grow, but then the market went the other way. Now, towards the end of this year, we were already consigned to ending the year with a second straight annual loss. And then all of a sudden, the last two days, saw the market go up by almost uh, 300 points. And now we're looking at the possibility of at least a flat close to the market. So it's really been quite difficult to, to get a grasp of, of where the market is going, particularly in the second half of the year. In your mind, what does it come down to? All this uh, volatility, uncertainty, all this unconventional uh, uh, trend. Well, there are a lot of factors that, I mean, there, there were major narratives, uh, let, let me put it that way, uh, this year. Number one, we had our own election year, uh, and then you had the, the uh, U.S. Fed uh, interest rate uh, story, and of course the U.S. elections. Three major narratives, and then a fourth one is the oil prices. So all this kept investors at a guessing game. Everybody's trying to guess where it's going to go. The local elections, there was really not much to guess as who will win. But what happened after the victory came, that's where a lot of uncertainty started to come in. Now, in terms of the United States, we still have to get that clear picture when Donald Trump takes office on January 20th. So that's still a big question mark for us. Oil prices, for the entire everybody was talking about an, a production freeze, finally happened this November. So there's a lot of things that uh, investors that a lot will... of people hadn't priced in at the start of it i'm going to yes. pull up a chart uh which we drew i was looking back at the stores that we carried throughout the last 12 months and there were some uh, very bold predictions for the end of the year for instance you have uh, pse president Hans Sikat saying well we're gonna lock yeah. in at least 10 ipos hopefully uh, various forecasters had said bsp will likely hike rates uh, given that uh inflationary pressures yes um, and then the forecast, uh, if I recall correctly, w for the uh, currency was for it to hit as low as 48.50. Obviously, we've reached that mark. Right. And there was also the China slowdown fears, which didn't turn out to be quite the narrative it was in 2016. It's a bad year for analysts. <laughs> How does this change the strategy going into next year? Well, I, I think that the 10 IPOs we was put into context that they made those plans at the end of 2014, when, uh, sorry, 2015, when things were starting to look rosy. And you know things suddenly made a turn, and indeed there were a lot of IPOs that companies applied for 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 listing, but they just had to defer their uh, their listing uh, dates because of what happened in the second half of the year. But you know, if I, I guess without all of these headwinds that we we faced in the second half, that would have been achievable at ten IPOs. No, I think we got about four, so we're a forty percent accomplishment rate. With the BSP rate hike, um, well, we didn't really expect BSP to touch the rates this year. I recall in one of our sessions uh, before, we did talk about the U.S. Federal Reserve always taking action in December. In 2013, we're talking about tapering. They made the decision in December. 2015, they talked about interest rates. The first time, they raised it in December. And again, this year, the action was taken in December. Now, moving forward, we think the BSP will have to look into several factors. One, you mentioned inflation, how the currency moves uh, moving forward. Probably thinking that uh, it might be put into serious consideration going to the second half of the year. Is there any way to hedge in a world where there's so much uncertainty? Uh, you have a very, uh, you know, a U.S. policy that's yeah. quite nebulous at this stage still. Yeah. How do you hedge for that? Well, in terms of investments, usually you run to, to fixed income securities, but even the yields there that's have right. not been yep. too good. So gold was a, 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 an all-time favorite, but again, it, it did go up, but then it's, it, it wasn't really that sustainable. So that all falls under what I, I mentioned at the top of this uh, interview is that it's been unconventional. The old norms that we had been, we had gotten used to, they seem to be all violated now. So you have to think about, you know, say think out of, out of the box, but so I, I think this is really difficulty now, but we are now at a period where we're, I think we're going back to normalization. 
and it's going to be another difficult period. 2017 for, for normalization, yeah, you think? I think Famous so. last words, June. I'm I kidding. Think so. And actually, the best performing uh, commodity of 2016 is the Bitcoin, surging more right. than 100%, <laughs> but we're not going to get into that. I'm going to toss it out to JP first. Um, JP, you've got a question? Yeah, that's right. June, uh, the down newsroom. I mean, look, I, I want to focus more on more recent history, specifically the last two days and this rebound that we've seen in local markets. Uh, you know, it's been, par it's been partially attributed or mostly attributed to a lot of window dressing that happens at the end of every quarter. If that's the case, though, how sustainable are these recent gains heading in 2017? Could we see actually reversal when we, when we resume trading um, come January 3? Well, I think what we must really look into is that the last two days, and maybe even today, we don't know what's going to happen to the market today. Even assuming the market goes up by another 100 points today, that does not change the underlying narratives for the year. The oil price problem is still there. The currency is still depreciating. Uh, the threat of an interest rate hike uh, in the U.S. for at least two or three more uh, this coming year are still there. So it doesn't change the picture. It only changes short-term sentiments, and these are just positioning ahead of the next year. But I think when we move into, tw into 2017, we have to consider that all of these stories, underlying stories, are still present. I mean, and finally, June, I mean, fourth quarter earnings, of course, we know they're expecting them around February. It's a little bit away still, but how important will it be look, moving forward in determining the market's direction next year? And also, I mean, just uh, with the question of how the market's valuations will react oh, come 2017. Before you answer that, June, I want to pull up the chart on the PSE against the ASEAN. Year-to-date performance, what we're going to see is that PSE looks to be one of the region's laggards. It was only overnight that the KLCI overtook the Philippines in terms of losses. What does that tell you about valuations, as JP was asking? Well, of course, valuations have gone down. But I think going to the fourth quarter, I don't think it will play too much into the equation. It will have a... a uh, a, uh, an effect, an impact. It will be played up probably over the short term. But I think what we must really be looking forward to, and the more important numbers that we must wait for, are first quarter numbers. Because this will draw the baseline for, for 2017. We know that we're still coming off a, a, a relatively better year in 2016. But 2017, in terms of the economy, in terms of business, in terms of profits, then we have to look at that as the baseline number. And June, when you talk about valuations, we can't get away from talking about how badly the peso has performed this right. year. As I was showing you earlier, 48.50 was the forecast. We're now beyond that. In fact, the forecast for and as well forwards for next year not looking too great either. We're looking at solidly past the 50 level to the greenback mark. How much of a worry is this to you? Well, it's worrisome in the sense that. Uh, um, it is testing the 50 peso support level. No. Or I guess the more specific question is, do you think that might hurt investor appetite? I think it will. I think we're already feeling some of the pains of uh, this uh, currency depreciation that we're having. And I think it, will, it might continue on. So this puts a lot of pressure now on the domestic economy to prove itself. I was, um, <laughs> JP and I were talking about it earlier, that the bull market that we've had over the last uh, several years was driven by two major things, increased liquidity because of the expansion of our monetary policies and the strong macroeconomic numbers that the Philippines have been posting. Now, the question is, number one, uh, with the interest rate hike in the U.S., it may siphon off some of this liquidity back to the U.S., so that's one leg down. Now we're talking about the macroeconomy having to stand up and give another leg to the stock market. Coming. So now it's time for the economy to prove itself.